Good evening, everyone. Over here, the large man. Okay. Uh, my name is Anthony Williams. I'm the uh, trombone professor over at University of Northern Iowa. Um, and it's an honor uh, to, to be here once again on the third, sun, third Thursday, I'm thinking about church, third Thursday of July, uh, to host the what was formerly known as the Iowa Trombones, but I changed the name once Merlin uh, forced me to take over. Uh, I've changed it to the, the slide shindig. Um, so basically what we do uh, is we gather over on the campus of the University of, no University of Northern Iowa starting at 9 a.m. Um, we guzzle tons of gallons and gallons and gallons of orange juice and we eat dozens and dozens and dozens of donuts. And what else? Oh, we play trombone. Uh, we play trombone for about eight hours. Um, try to pick out the program for you guys, uh, and hopefully you enjoyed that first piece by Bruckner, which was actually originally written for organ. Uh, I think trombone. Oh, thank you. And so that first piece by Bruckner was originally written for organ, and I think the trombones are a nice substitute. Obviously, we can't pull a big organ out here, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, so I want I want to um, make you aware of. We have three special guests with us this year um, that were able to make it up to Cedar Falls to join us. Um, together they are called the Dry Bones Trio. They are a trombone trio that have been around. I think they, they started playing together in 2015, am I right? Okay, so we have three professors. Michael Davidson, who's standing on the podium right now. Oh no, he was standing on the podium for the first piece. Uh, he's the professor of trombone at the University of Kansas. How about a hand for Michael? On the podium now is Dr. Timothy Howe, who is the professor of trombone at the University of Missouri. And then holding down the brown notes over there, J. Mark Thompson on bass trombone is all here from Northwestern State University in Louisiana. 
bring in the Cajon. <laughs> so um, yeah, we had we had these gentlemen here with us today. Um, they performed for our for our guests during a 1 p.m. hour. Um, had lots of fun. They've rehearsed some music with us, and we're gonna keep uh, playing for you. So we're not gonna talk a lot. So um, not much blah blah. We're gonna do a lot of ta ta for you. So hopefully you enjoy us. Um, we are again on the slide shindig, and we're gonna play some more tunes for you. Thank you.
Once again, we are the Summer Slide Shindig. Uh, we have one more for you. Uh, this is a Tommy Pedersen composition entitled Bosco Roscoe. It's a cakewalk, hopefully you enjoy it. All right, good evening. Welcome to our seventh concert. We only have one more left after this. I know that's kind of sad, but we have some great music for you tonight, and you hopefully enjoyed some of the great music with the summer slide shindig. Let's hear, have another hand for them. That was awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And they're going to be joining us on a couple of numbers. Uh, during the concert tonight. So so you get to have more trombone. I don't know, can you have enough trombone? Maybe yeah. not, apparently not. <laughs> so tonight, um, we'd like to thank the City of Waterloo for sponsoring us and our videographer, Ryan, our photographer, and the Center for the Arts for setting everything up, and you for being here on this wonderful night to enjoy some, some fantastic music, lots of different kinds of music, and um, hopefully y'all have a great time and enjoy yourselves tonight. So if you would please stand for our Star Spangled Banner.
Good evening, everyone. Our first piece on tonight's program is called Burning the Wicker Man. And that would make one think about the ancient the Druid and Celtic practice of building a, a wooden wicker figure for a human sacrifice or an animal sacrifice. This piece is not about that, <laughs> thankfully. In fact, I'm not aware of any pieces about human sacrifice, which is probably good. This piece is inspired by the fact that we still use that imagery of burning effigies and burning, burning a wicker man at many concerts and celebrations and, and moments where we have, uh, where, where we light a fire in order to, to help us to celebrate an event in modern times. This music is by Julie Drew. It's called Burning the Wicker Man.
our next composition is by Carol Britton Chambers. It's called Rainbow in the Clouds. And the music is based on the spiritual God put a rainbow in the clouds. to get into long discuss discussions about how fast a pasodoble should be. And the answer is, it depends on what is happening in the bullfight. And pasodobles are written for specific occasions, specific moments of action in a bullfight. And uh, uh, just like we have uh, bands in basketball games and football games here, if you walked into a Spanish bullfight, there'd be a Spanish band sitting there, and most of the music that they would play is traditional Spanish music, and a lot of them would be pasodobles. I'm really excited to share with you a really popular, well-known pasodoble, Amparita Loca. <laughs>
have some absolutely fantastic high school bands in Iowa, middle school bands, elementary bands, all across the state of Iowa, and especially in the Cedar Valley and in Northeast Iowa. Waterloo has fantastic bands, Hudson, uh, Independence, all of them. If I start naming towns, I'll leave somebody out, but all of these towns have such great bands, and the Cedar Falls bands are fantastic, fantastic ensembles. And so, uh, last year, I was talking to Mr. Ramsey, and he suggested a piece for this group to play. It's a piece that you're about to hear, and at that time I said, you should do it. You should come and do this piece instead of me. We had a great rehearsal with Mr. Ramsey last night. I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about the music that you're about to hear. Would you please help me to welcome to the podium, Mr. Gerald Ramsey. All righty. Um, thank you very much. First of all, uh, thank you for coming to all the concerts every time. For me, getting to play in this band every week is, is just a highlight. You know, I, I just love doing this. And I really did want to play trumpet on this piece, but, uh, uh, but, but Danny asked me to do it. And, and uh, I thought, well, you know, the, every year the, the mayor does this and it makes it look so easy. So I thought, what the heck, you know, might as well. <laughs>
So right now we're going to invite our trombones back down, and I need some kids to help me with the children's march. We're going to we have a lot of stuff to dodge, but we're going to do the best we can. Okay. All right. Great. Hey, how about another hand for Gerald Ramsey and. You know, a, a great conductor is what helps make a band sound great, and we appreciate our conductors because they really, they really help us sound amazing. Hi guys, how are you? Good. Welcome back. I like seeing you. Okay, so today we're going to do National Emblem, which is a piece by Edwin Bagley. Okay. And you know what? He wrote this piece, and he was inspired by the Star Spangled Banner. So you all have to listen very carefully to the beginning strain, because you can hear the, the notes from the Star Spangled Banner. But believe it or not, he threw it away. What? He, yes. Can you believe it? No. He threw it away. He was, he was upset with it. He didn't like the ending, so he threw it away. And his, the other uh, players in his band said, no. So they pulled it out of the trash and practiced it in the back room. And then when they had a concert, they said, guess what? We're playing this. And it became one of the most popular patriotic numbers around, right up there with the Stars and Stripes Forever. Now, if you notice, we have a lot of instruments in the back row. What instrument is that? You know what instrument that is? Trombone. Very good. It is a trombone. And do you know what's different about a trombone than every other instrument in the band? What's different about it? Besides, it's got some different kind of people, but you know. <laughs> trombone players are kind of an own entity of themselves, right guys? <laughs> what do they have? A slide. A slide. You guys want to demonstrate that slide for us? Kind of show us that fancy stuff you guys can do? Well, make a sound. <laughs> okay, that's good, thank you. <laughs> Maybe that was the wrong thing to ask. But they're going to play along with us on National Emblem, so I want you to listen for the Star Spangled Banner at the beginning in there. Kind of hidden, but you can find it and listen for those trombones, okay? Are you ready? All right. Okay. Awesome.
Well, I've done the National Emblem March so many times, but never with that many trombones, and now I don't want to do it any other way. <laughs> and now we have a chance to do something else that I've never done before, and that is to play a, a composition for a concert band in guitar. And I'm really excited to introduce to you Luke Sanders, who's our guitar teacher at UNI, and he's going to tell you a little bit about this piece. This is Luke Sanders. Thank you all for uh, coming out on this beautiful evening. Um, as, uh, as Danny said, my name is Luke Sanders. Um, I want to just give some context about the piece that you're about to hear, because Danny also said this doesn't happen a lot where we combine guitar with concert band. So uh, I just I became privy to the piece that we're about to do a few years ago when I saw it on YouTube, and I've never seen uh, another guitar concerto that I have enjoyed. Uh, just as much and a lot of the reason that I enjoy it a lot is because it was a guitar song prior to it being a concerto. So this was originally uh, written by Mario Perichek who is an Austrian guitarist. Uh, Mario is famous for this like finger picking and percussion style that he does with guitar and he just goes around Europe and busts and he writes some incredible music um, that I think you're really going to enjoy. Um, he recently had some uh, adversity happen when he was driving in Portugal to perform on the, on the street and his van was broken into and they stole uh, all of his gear, which is, yeah, gasp, I agree. Um, which I believe he got most of it back in a recent GoFundMe, but if you like what you hear tonight, uh, I am sure he would love any album or CD sales that you all, lovely people, Waterloo, uh, might like. So if you like it, feel free to reach out. Woo, there it is. Uh, and support Mario's music. Thank you. This piece is in two movements, two, two movements. The first one's called Between the Lines, and the second one's called Shining, and we invite you to applaud and go crazy in between both movements, we'll be fine, okay?
How about another hand for Luke Sanders? Maybe the only way we can follow that is with a waltz. This is Leroy Anderson, Bell of the Ball, 1951, a piece that he wrote during a very productive year for him, where he was composing a lot of very popular music that, that remains in our, in, our, in our minds today as a great uh, American light music. He wrote this piece to try to revive the style of the Viennese waltz in America. This is Bell of the Ball. composition is inspired, it is inspired by Caribbean music. It's called Caravana After Party, and it's written by Omar Thomas.
Glad our guest trombones are getting set up for our final piece, America the Beautiful. Just want to remind you that next week on Thursday is our final concert of the season. And we have a lot of great music planned for you, some Irish music that you'll really like, some Mexican music, some Gershwin, some big, big band music, a lot of different music to finish out our season. So we hope that you'll join us uh, next week for our final concert. Special thanks to Luke Sanders, to Gerald Ramsey, and to all of our guest trombones for making tonight extra special.